So yes, there is a way to convert a high poly model to a low poly model without losing any details. Uh, so not with a decimate modifier. What the f***? The neighbors are drilling. Okay, I'll be right back. So in one of my last videos, I showed you this uh, model I 3D scanned. And this one is the full quality model with all the geometry. Um, and this is really great for close-ups, like I showed in the video. But it's really bad if you go duplicate this a bunch of times in the background. It will end up with a lot of unneeded geometry. So a way to fix this is, uh, like I said in a video, to get a decimate modifier and decreasing it. So now in the background, there are a lot less faces, as you can see here. Uh, 63,000 um, will turn into 1,500. And from far away, it looks it looks the same as, as this one, but you have a lot less faces. And if you come closer, uh, you can actually see the textures are stretching and they're glitching out. So to get the best of both worlds is to do something like this. You want to duplicate your model and retopologize it. And for this video, I was lazy as so I just decimated it and uh, this is what I came out with. Uh, if you want to do that, just search for another video. Or ask me in the comments and I'll, I'll show you how. We have the low poly model and what we're going to do is bake the normal textures onto this one on the low poly model so we get the amount of detail from the high poly model as a texture instead of as actual geometry so to do that we just want to for the purpose of that video just delete the decimated model and just um, move these back to the middle I'm going to rename this for you so you can uh, see which is which and you see it uh, lines up pretty well so what we want to do is go to the low poly model and delete the textures just add a new one call this uh, low poly textures open the shader editor and add an image texture create a new image um, call this um, something like rock uh, normal I'm going to make this a 2K texture. Yeah, we have to change the render engine to cycles because baking only works in cycles. So um, make sure you have it set the cycles. It will show up in this bake icon and you can see this bake type is combined. We actually want to set this to normal. I forgot something. Before we can actually bake, we need UV maps. Go to the UV editor. Select our low poly model. We can uh, smart UV project and they give it an island margin. It works better. We'll give you this, but I think um, Polycare does a great job with uh, creating a UV island, so I'm just going to use this one. I'm just going to use the defaults, but make sure it's um, unwrapped. So in the bake, you have set it to normal, and we want to check this selected to active one. And then we can play with these extrusion and max ray distance values. But uh, for now, we want to make sure that we are clear on what's selected and what's active. So active selections in Blender work with the orange outline. These are things that move when you press G, uh, rotate when you press R. And you can also select multiple objects. And one of them becomes red, red-ish, and the other one is orange. And if we select multiple, it will show the active as orange and the selected as red. So we want selected to active. So we would need to select our low poly model first and, and then shift select the high poly model. This sounds really confusing, but I swear it's, it's logical. So now we can just uh, go back to the bake and make sure you have the image texture uh, selected outlined in the shader editor and make sure you did this step correct with the low poly yellow high poly red you can just quick click bake that's done baking we just look at the normal map so it worked really well um, except for these parts that were sticking out didn't really capture that so that for that we need to change the extrusion a little bit usually to like uh, 0.05 that will work great i think so 
select the rock normal in the low poly textures material I created again. Make sure everything is uh, selected again the right way, like this, and back. And if we look at this, it looks uh, amazing. The normal texture doesn't really make any sense. I don't know what I did wrong. It looks to be, uh, be working great. Well, I guess this is just a weird normal texture you're going to get. But if we go into render view, we can actually see there's a lot of bump here. Check on the uh, high poly, we see the moss here. So we can actually see that uh, in this normal map. And we can now do the same for the albedo texture. And this works pretty much in the same way. Just change this to diffuse and uncheck the direct and indirect. Still select it to active and bake. So you have to play with the strength of the normal map a little bit. As you can actually see there's not a lot of difference anymore. On the high poly model a roughness is set to one so you can do that here as well. Now, if we just uh, move these, I cannot tell the difference. So I'm going to guess right now which one is the high poly model and which is the low poly model. So this has actual geometry. It looks really round, so uh, that is probably the high poly model. And this one looks a little bit more jagged. Yeah, this is probably the low poly model. Yeah, okay. So it took me actually a lot of effort to see this, which one <laughs> was high and which one was low poly. So this works really great. It looks the same, it still works for close-ups. If I make the same animation like I did in the other video, it will just look the same, but with uh, less geometry. So yeah, that's the tutorial for you. That's how you can uh, convert a high poly model to a low poly model without losing details. And no decimate modifier. So if you like this, uh, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment what you want to see next. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I can make a tutorial on it, and no problem. Uh, check out my Gumroad, a CG Trader. There's some sale, sale going on right now. Take a look there. So uh, that's it for me. Bye.